In October 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite into orbit. The U.S. responded by injecting additional funding for math and science into its education system. They were known as Sputnik kids. Among them was Chicago native Ned Seaman. Uh, there was, must have been a whole generation of us. In many ways, Seaman embodies the designation. Self-assembling DNA nanostructures, scaffolding built entirely of DNA. DNA robots, all products of a field he founded called DNA nanotechnology. In 1978, Seaman was a skilled crystal scientist at SUNY Albany, but he had a problem. I had to actually figure out how to grow the crystals, and I am terrible at that, absolutely awful. As a crystal scientist with no crystals, Seaman agreed to help a colleague with a molecular biology project to build a molecular model of DNA called a Holiday Junction, first proposed by molecular biologist Robin Holiday in 1964, which loosely resembles a crossroads or highway intersection. In doing so, Seaman realized that DNA was surprisingly well-suited chemically to use as a construction material. We tend to associate DNA strictly with biology, but DNA is simply a chain of four chemical bases. In fact, using special equipment, a scientist can precisely arrange the chemical bases into a customized strand of DNA. In the 1980s, a friend gave Seaman an idea. It should be possible to produce holiday-like structures with six arms. Seaman headed off to a place where those burdened by complicated uncertainties often go to contemplate them. No, I went to the bar. I went to the bar intentionally uh, to think about six-arm junctions of DNA. And at the bottom of his glass, Seaman found an epiphany. But while I was sitting in the bar having my beer, I suddenly thought about Escher's woodcut depth, which has fish in it. And it's a 3D arrangement of these things, sort of like jacks. Three dimensions, repeating geometrical patterns, what Seaman was imagining was a crystal made of DNA. He had a mind-bending notion that if he designed the DNA segments correctly, the crystal would assemble all by itself. Synthetic DNA can be created with a feature scientists call sticky ends. When producing a DNA double helix, scientists can make one strand longer than its counterpart. That's a sticky end. Now watch what happens when it comes into contact with a complementary sticky end the two helices bond. Seaman realized that if he could synthesize individual segments of DNA with strategically placed sticky ends, he could put all the parts in the same dish and they would self-assemble. Seaman's epiphany is a founding principle of DNA nanotechnology. My entire career has been spent kind of on what I would call the edge of life there, either half sort of on the cusp of biology and chemistry, the physical sciences on one end and the biological sciences on the other. During the decades since 1980, Siemens Lab has produced dazzling self-assembling crystal structures, self-assembling machines only three billionths of a meter wide with moving parts. Using techniques based on Siemens' work, scientists have even created works of art made entirely of DNA. Siemens Field is laying the groundwork for a world where humankind can manipulate matter with precision at molecular scales. Imagine a nanoscaled chemical machine that could be programmed to repair DNA, or a self-assembling scaffold that protects delicate cancer drug molecules that would normally be destroyed by the body before reaching a tumor site. 300 years from now, I can't even imagine what we're going to be making. I couldn't have imagined a computer as complex as my little telephone that, uh, you know, even 20 or 30 years ago, sitting in my shirt pocket. In a world with advanced nanotechnology, millions of nanobots might one day be deployed in a patient to rebuild cells molecule by molecule. We might design electronics that assemble themselves atom by atom. We may be just decades away from a world like this thanks to the groundwork laid by Ned Seaman and his ability to think small in a big way.